Today I wish to speak to you a little bit about uh, one of the names of Allah and one of the ways in which He talks about Him quite often in the Qur'an and that is the name of Allah Al-Alim, the one who knows. Uh, and Allah mentions often in the Qur'an how much He knows and how He knows everything. Wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim. An example ayah that I want to share with you to start off with is what He mentions in Surah Al-Taghab in the 64th Surah. He says, يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He knows whatever is in the skies and whatever is in the earth. وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تُسِرُّونَ وَمَا تُعْلِنُونَ And he knows the things you keep secret and the things you let known. So the things you actually let people know and the things you don't let people know that are hiding inside you, he knows both of those. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِذَاتِ الصُّدُورِ And above and beyond all of that, Allah is fully knowledgeable and has always known about the nature and the reality of what's hiding inside the chests. So a remarkable ayah and what I wanted to do for starters is just have us think about Beyond the obvious, we know Allah knows everything. We know Allah knows everything that we're hiding inside of ourselves and everything on the outside. We know Allah knows the seven heavens and all of it. But let's put some of this in perspective. How does Allah demonstrate to us how, what He knows compared to what we could never have known ourselves? The best way to, one of the best ways to appreciate Allah's names is to actually understand our own limits by comparison then you really get to appreciate the perfection of Allah and really get to appreciate how, how insignificant slaves we are before Allah Azzawajal. So for starters, what I want to share with you is, let's just talk about knowledge of history. You know, historians record when a war happened and which king won or which nation conquered or how long a dynasty was. And this is what historian records can document. But a historian can never document the way Allah documents in the Qur'an what Fir'aun felt before he spoke. Like Allah doesn't just tell us what happened and what conversation took place, He actually tell, tells us what was going on inside of him. Allah wanted to show them the things they were afraid of. Who would know Fir'aun is afraid? What historian is going to know how he felt? Allah Azza wa records that in the Qur'an. Think about how Allah records the prayers of Ibrahim alayhi salam. There was nobody there. Ibrahim was in a desert by himself alayhi salam, making dua to Allah. And there's no historian, no other human being that documents this record. And thousands of years later, we know exactly the conversation that took place between Allah and Ibrahim alayhi salam. This is how Allah knows history the way we can never know history. And He knows a point of view on history that no history book will ever cover. You know, sometimes people criticize the Qur'an doesn't have dates it doesn't have geographical locations when it talks about history. It just simply mentions these things. But Allah mentions the kind of history that human beings could never know. And the things that human beings could figure out, Allah doesn't tell us. He teaches you what you could never have known on your own. So that's just an example of history. Think about the fact that we could never have known that there are seven skies. How would a human being ever know that? We don't even know the end of the first sky. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحِ The lowest sky, the lowest of the seven skies, Allah said He decorated them with stars. The lowest sky, He decorated with stars. With all the telescopes that we have, all the technology that we have, all the means by which we're able to see light years and billions of light years away, all we still see is stars, isn't it? And so by that definition, all we're looking at as far as we've seen into the universe is still within the first sky. And Allah tells us there are seven skies. We could, human beings could never have known the clues that Allah has given us in the Qur'an. Allah, we wouldn't, what human being would know what's going to happen after we die? How are you and I supposed to know what's going to happen of our bodies? What kind of questions are we going to be asked? What will happen on resurrection? What's, going to be, what's judgment day going to look like? What questions are going to be asked? How are we going to look? Where are we going to be? What, 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 what event will happen first and second and third? What does Jannah look like? What, what, you know, what is this place Jannah? What is his description? What kind of people will live in it? What conversations are they going to have? Again, historians and human beings can have knowledge of what happened in the past and what happens right now. But Allah even has knowledge of the future. There are people in heaven having a conversation that will have it happen infinitely into the future and Allah already knows and He's telling us as if it's already happened. You see? As if it's a promise already fulfilled. And that's an indication, it's the clue of how much Allah knows. How would we know about angels? How would you and I know, يُرْسِلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظًا That He sends guardian angels over each of you. How would we know there are people that are writing all the deeds that we do? Kiram and Katibi, noble writers. How would we know that something as simple as asking Allah's forgiveness opens doors to your rizq? You know, إِسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا 
we would never have known that simply turning back to Allah and asking His forgiveness is going to get you a new job, is going to actually you know, make your baby's health better, is going to take care of some issue in your life that, you were, that wasn't open before, now it's opened up. You know? And that's what Allah says. Human beings could never have made that connection. There's no way for us to acquire that knowledge. No science, no research, no laboratory can discover this. This can only come from Allah. Of course, you know, the biggest mystery of, of all, how would we know who Allah is? What kind of master is He? What kind of God is He? How does He, what kind of relationship does He want with you and me? We could never have known that. People could discover there's a God, but who, what's He like? What does He love? What does He hate? What does He want from me? What is His plan for me? What does He expect from me? We would never have known any of these things had Allah not taught us. And so that brings me to this next piece of the equation. And that is that, uh, just by way of example, I hope I can make this clear to, to myself and to all of you. You know, sometimes we go, like you're having some kind of issue, like you're, having, you're sneezing a lot or something, or you're getting a fever, so you go to a doctor, right? And the doctor, of course, knows the human body, they know medicine, they do a checkup, and they say, I think you have this or that or the other. Right? They, they check you out and they say, I think you have a you know, bacterial infection or you have a virus or you have allergies or whatever they tell you. Right? But is it possible that the, that the uh, diagnosis of the doctor is incorrect? Happens all the time. Right? They, don't, they didn't check for some other things. So they didn't look at your liver and they only looked at your heart rate or something. And they never even discovered that the problem was somewhere else. Right? So sometimes what happens is we look at one thing and we don't realize there's some other things happening that may be related. Like for example, to give you, even from the medical world, even though I am not a medical professional by any stretch of the imagination, but just as an example, there could be somebody who's having heart trouble or blood pressure problems, right? But the, the, the advice they get is about changing their diet or they get advice about, you know, maybe some procedure. But maybe the, one of the root causes is a lot of stress at home or a lot of arguments. And because of the stress and the anxiety, blood pressure and heart rate are being disturbed. So there's something psychological happening that's affecting something physical. That may be the case. But sometimes we only look at one side of the problem. We don't look at all sides of the problem to diagnose what's really going on. Now that's, let's take that outside of the medical profession. You go to somebody that you need advice from or somebody gives you advice. They look at you and they say, I think you're having a problem. Let me give you some advice. And in your head, you're saying to yourself, man, you're giving me this advice, but you don't really know me. You don't know the whole situation. You don't know everything else that's going on. You're just giving me this advice thinking that you've understood the problem. You don't understand the whole problem. You don't even know the whole picture. And, and, and even if you explain the whole picture to them, sometimes you try to explain the full picture to them before they try to give you advice. Even after hearing that, they don't understand it the way you would want them to. And they still give you advice that you say, I don't think you really understand what I'm going through, even though I've tried to explain it to you. You understand? So even when somebody tries to give us advice sometimes, it may not be based on full knowledge of what we're actually experiencing. And that can become frustrating because, you know, they're not getting where we're coming from. Another, you know, example of that is even ourselves. If you're in a, in a problem situation, your mind tells you to get out of that problem a certain way. Right? You, you tell yourself, this is what I need to do. This is what I need to do. But whatever you tell yourself, because you're in that situation, you're stressed out, you have anxiety, you have anger, you have whatever other frustration, what you tell yourself at that time, if you were completely calm, you would give yourself different advice, wouldn't you? Or if you took the time to think about it, you would consider other factors that you didn't consider at the time. In other words, even when we diagnose ourselves, even when we give ourselves advice, it's biased. We can't even give neutral fully considered advice to even ourselves. We're not even capable of that. And so the, 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 I keep coming back to the idea of advice, the doctor giving you impartial advice possibly, you know, a friend, a family member giving you partial advice, you yourself giving yourself biased and, uh, and partial advice. The reason I'm sharing all of this with you is, and, and, you know, is because when Allah says that He knows everything, and then He says that He advises us, okay? Counsel, advice has come to you from your master. Quran, Allah says about Himself, Allah is teaching you, and Allah knows everything. Allah is knowledgeable of everything. You know what that means? That means that He understands your situation completely, 
even better than you and I can understand our own situation. He recognizes our problem, our feelings, our thoughts, the thoughts we have said, the thoughts nobody has ever known that are going on in our head. Sometimes something's going on in your head, your face looks a little disturbed, your husband or wife or son or daughter turns to you and says, what's wrong? And you say, nothing, even though everything's going on. You just say nothing, because you know they can't handle it. But Allah knows that nothing is something. He knows exactly what it is. And knowing all of that, He gives advice. Knowing all of that. You know, it's kind of unfair sometimes that we think the Qur'an is there to give us religious advice. The doctor will give us medical advice. The mechanic will give us car advice. The accountant is going to give us financial advice. And Qur'an will give us what? Religious advice. But Allah is not limited to religion. Allah's knowledge is knowledge of all things in your life. Everything that's going on inside you. Everything that is for your best physically everything that's for your best financially, everything that's best for you socially, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, you know, in in terms of your health, everything that He... Because all of that is Allah's making. And He made you and me. أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ Doesn't He know who He created? After knowing us completely, He gave this advice. So this advice is not just one angle, you see. It's not just one point of view. Human beings can only see things from one point of view. Allah sees all points of view. Allah sees all points of view. And that's why, you know, Allah Azza wa Jal is the, you know, لا يدركه الأبصار You know, he, eyes cannot perceive him, but he can see through all the eyes, he says. يدركه الأبصار he, he perceives all vision, all perspectives. So it's not like your perspective is something Allah didn't take into consideration. Your situation is something, you know, sometimes people hear advice from Allah's book, or you even contemplate advice from Allah's book, and you say, yeah, this is, this is good religious stuff, but my situation is special, it doesn't apply to me. Because, you know, you don't know my full circumstance. Yeah, I don't know your full circumstance. Somebody else doesn't know your full circumstance. Allah certainly does. Allah certainly does. And He gave this advice to humanity knowing every single human being and all of their problems and all of their needs put together. That's when Allah speaks. When He says, وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ When Allah is knowledgeable and Allah is wise. This book is based on wisdom. You know, one of the names of Allah that keeps coming up with His name knowledgeable multiple times in the Qur'an is that He hears. He hears. وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ The one who hears, the one who knows. Human beings have been crying to Allah and crying to each other and speaking to others about their problems or having conversations with themselves since the beginning of history. And Allah has heard all of it. All of it. And all of it taken into consideration, He gave us His revelation. That's a mercy from Allah Azza wa Jal. So when He says that a counsel has come to you from your, from your Rabb, وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ It came to heal what you have inside of your chest. That's because He knows what is inside of your chest. He knows what, I, what I'm feeling. He knows what I'm going through. And just like sometimes a doctor gives you a, a, you know, a diagnosis and he gives you a prescription that isn't very pleasant. You know, no doctor you're going to go to if you have like, you know, tooth problems is going to say, I don't think you're eating enough chocolate because you need to just, you need to keep, you know, do what feels good. Sometimes the advice given is painful. Sometimes it's a root canal, isn't it? Sometimes the best thing for you is surgery, isn't it? Sometimes what you need to get, you need to experience is painful, but it's actually better for you. Somebody has, sometimes people have a terminal disease in one part of their body, you know, and it's spreading. And the advice is that that part of the body should be cut off. Now losing a part of your body is unimaginably painful. But the choice is this, either you cut it off or you let the cancer spread everywhere. That's your, those are your choices, right? And so sometimes very painful advice is not, not meant to cause you pain, but actually to save you from destruction. You know, to save you from destruction. It could be that you love something, but it's no good for you. It could be that you hate something, but it's actually better for you. Based on what is actually better for you and actually better for me, whether or not we can see it, Based on Allah's knowledge, He gives us advice. He speaks to us. He teaches us. Allah says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهِ Have consciousness of Allah, and Allah is the one teaching you. You know, last comment about this is the difference between right and wrong. 
Allah gave human beings, every human being, the ability to tell the difference between right and wrong. It doesn't matter what religion you come from, what culture you come from, you know that lying is wrong. You know that cheating is wrong. You know that stealing is wrong. You know that hurting somebody else is wrong. You know that pushing the orphan is wrong. You know that you know, you know, uh, oppressing somebody who can't help themselves is wrong. You know that degrading somebody is wrong. You know these things are wrong, regardless of where you are in the world, what culture you come from, what society you come from. This is something Allah put on all human beings in their nature. Allah programmed that before we even came on this earth. So that's universal. But above and beyond that, there are some things that we could never have known are wrong or right. There's some basic morality that everybody understands. That's the basis that Allah taught us already. But above and beyond that, we could never have known what's right and wrong. There's no way I could have known that the, 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 the flesh of swine is no good. I couldn't have known that on my own. That I couldn't have known certain animals are not good for me to eat. I couldn't have known, for example, what's good for me, these prayers at this schedule, five prayers, very specific times, aren't they? There's no way I could have known that's really what's best for me. There's no way I could have known that. So the dif- this distinction between right and wrong, human beings have some sense of that. But Allah has the full picture of it. So when Allah tells you and me something is wrong, and when Allah tells you and me something is right, then you and I have to put our knowledge of what we think is right and wrong aside, and we have to submit ourselves to the fact that Allah knows more than we can ever know. That Allah is Al-Alim. Allah is the one who knows. And Allah knows what is right is always going to be better for us. The reason we are hesitant to take Allah's advice sometimes is we think that if we follow what Allah is saying, it's going to cause pain. And you know what the fact is? When you follow what Allah says, in many cases, it does cause pain. That's a fact of life. Following what Allah says does not lead lead to comfort. It can lead to difficulty. The best people who followed Allah's advice were prophets and their lives were full of difficulty, yes or no? Right? So following what Allah says will lead to difficulty. But that difficulty is way better for you than any ease that comes if you don't follow it. That's the truth. The truth is, if you don't follow His words and find some easy way for yourself where you feel you're safer, you feel that's best for you, you can lie to yourself, you can tell yourself that's best for you, but the truth is you are heading yourself into destruction. And I'm heading myself into destruction. I pray that Allah Azza wa Jal really helps us internalize in the depths of our hearts what it means that Allah knows everything. And based on that knowledge, we are, it's easier for us to trust His advice and trust His counsel and live by it. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim.